Hi students, this is Mr. Yao. Today we're going to talk about 5.1a, where we will learn a completely new topic, trigonometry functions. Let's start with some review. Since we're talking about trigonometry, you kind of uh, would notice we start with the word TRI that relates to triangle. So of course, we're going to talk about triangle. And the most famous theorem we have learned about triangle is called Pythagorean theorem, which is a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Let's do some practice to review uh, the Pythagorean theorem. The important thing is you need to make sure you know how to identify the C. The C is typically the longest side, which is facing the right angle. So that is going to be our C. When we set it up, 24 squared plus x squared equals 26 squared. This is 576 plus x squared equals <coughs> 676. Subtract 576 on both sides, we got x squared equals 100. And we can square root both sides, x is going to be 10. That's the first question. Second question, right angle is facing the longest side, which is our c. So in this case, x is our c. Square root of 10 squared, square root of 13 squared, that equals to x squared. So it's 10 plus 13 equals x squared. So x squared equals 23. I can square root both sides, x equals square root of 23. Since the instruction set no rounding, we are going to keep the simplified radicals. Don't forget a unit for this one is mile. Next, question three. Right angle is facing the longest side, so square root of 226 is the longest side. That is our C. We have 7 squared plus x squared equals square root of 226 being squared. So it's 49 plus x squared, that equals to 226. Subtract 49 on both sides, we got x equals 177. Um, square root of both sides. That is square root of 177. Which, um, if you divide that by 3, um, that would give you 59. So you can't keep going. So that is the simplest form. You can't simplify that radical anymore. And don't forget the unit meter on the end. Next, example 4. This time you're not being asked to solve for anything, it's asking to decide if this shape is a right triangle or not. So basically you're trying to see if a squared plus b squared does equal c squared or not. And it's the same idea, we got to identify our c first, even though we don't have a right angle that is facing the c, we got to know c, is actually, c has to be the longest side. Since the other two sides squared add up together to equal c squared, c is the longest side, which in this case, it means our 4 square root of 13 is our C. So let's set it up. Left side is a squared plus 12 squared. And the right side is 4 square root of 13 squared. a squared plus 12 squared is 64 plus 144. That is going to be 208. Now 4 square root of 13 being squared, something you need to be careful with is, because the square is outside, we're squaring the whole thing, you need to give that square to the 4 and give that square to the uh, square root of 13. So square root of uh, 4 squared is uh, 16. Square root of 13 squared is, 16, is 13. So basically it's 16 times 13, which is 208 as well. So they are the same, which means, yes, it is a right triangle. That is example 4. So these are the things that you have learned before, and we are just reviewing. Now let's get to the topic for today. Trigonometry is the study of right triangles and the relationship between the size and the angles of a right triangle. And if we take this word apart, it has tri, which means three. Gon, uh, we have the words pentagon, hexagon, decagon. They actually represent angle. Ometry is basically the study of something, the measure of something, so it means metric. So we are basically learning something, a metric, that's about three angles, which is, you know, learning more about triangles. Here's some uh, common use of trigonometry. Astronomy measured the height of the building or mountain. Video game, for example, Mario Jump. Construction, flight engineering, physics, archaeologist, criminology, marine biology, marine engineering, navigation, and etc. So trigonometry is actually something that's being used in a lot of STEM field, even nowadays in real life. Let's look at some definitions. We're going to look at the right triangle again, but this time in a different way. We used to look at the right triangle and just needed to talk about the Pythagorean theorem. So we just have the right angle 
and these are called the legs. That's kind of uh, how we actually used to learn that. Now we're going to need to identify a bit more. First, for the angles, we're going to use in trigonometry. We don't just use uh, capital letters of the 26th letter. We, in fact, use Greek letters. So we have alpha, beta, and theta. I would suggest you practice writing these a few times on your own paper. I'm going to start with alpha. Typically, write alpha like that. And you can make the top curl a little bit more, but it's not a letter A. It's not quite the same. It actually has the tip on the top and on the bottom, so that's alpha. It's like a little fish kind of shape. Beta, we typically start from the bottom and then basically uh, extend it to, and write a letter B. Theta, we have an oval and then a little bar in the middle. That's theta. So practice writing a few times because this, these are going to be the angles that we use quite a bit in trigonometry. Next, hypotenuse. Hypotenuse is the side that is facing the right angle. The right angle is right here. It's kind of saying hypotenuse is basically our C in Pythagorean theorem. Hypotenuse is the longest side and is facing the right angle. Adjacent side, the side that meets the hypotenuse to form the angle theta. So we can't count the hypotenuse anymore, because that is the hypotenuse. So the other side that is actually forming this angle is going to be called the adjacent side. As you can see, the side is also kind of next to theta. That's why it's called adjacent. And of course, opposite side is the side that is facing the angle theta. The angle theta, and uh, we're facing it. That is our opposite side. So uh, something to be careful with. In this specific definition, we talk about the angle theta. Then, of course, the adjacent side is next to the angle theta, and the opposite side is facing it. But if we're actually talking about this angle, let's say it's angle alpha, then suddenly this would become the opposite side, and the red opposite side would actually become the adjacent side, because this is the side that's next to alpha, and this AC is the side that's opposite of the alpha. So, these two are actually very important that you have to identify the angle first. And the adjacent side and the opposite side changes according to which angle you pick. So make sure you're very clear about the angle you pick. It's not just one side is always going to stay in adjacent side. It depends on which one you pick to talk about. Now, trigonometric ratio, there are six di distinct ratios. We are going to talk about the first three today. So here they are. We have sine, cosine, and tangent. Sine theta is defined as the opposite side over hypotenuse. Remember, they're all about this angle theta. The opposite side is the opposite to angle theta. Cosine theta is the adjacent side over hypotenuse. And tangent theta is the opposite side over adjacent. Uh, just looking at these formulas, they kind of look a bit complicated, especially if they're all just words. And they're words that's repeating, so it seems to be pretty hard to remember. But we have something that would be really helpful to help us. So we are going to use the initials to help us remember. Because you can see the initials here, S-O-H. Initials here, C-A-H. Initials here, T-O-A. And none of them are actually repeating. Because the S and the C and the T, they all equal to different things. That is what we're going to use to help us remember the ratios. It is called SOHCATOA. You can see SOH, they form SO, that means sine is opposite over hypotenuse. Then K is adjacent over hypotenuse. Tangent is opposite over adjacent. To make sure you actually remember, I would, uh, I would suggest you saying it in a kind of dramatic way. Like so, tour, and try to exaggerate so that you remember how the letters work. Now let's see the Sokotoa in action with some examples. Number one. First, our angle is right here, theta. That's the one that's being used in all the ratios being asked. Let's identify. Facing it is my opposite, so three. And next to it is my adjacent, so four. And hypotenuse is five. And sine theta is so, so O over H, opposite is 3, and H is 5. And then cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, so it's A over H is con, and that is going to be 4 over 5. Next, tangent theta is going to be opposite over adjacent, because it's toa, so that is going to be 3 over 4. That's example 1. 
moving on, example two. Now we have theta right here, facing it is my opposite, so eight, and next to it is my adjacent. Of course, the hypotenuse is 17. Sine theta, again, opposite over adjacent, that is going to be uh, opposite over hypotenuse, that is going to be eight over 17. Cosine is going to be adjacent over hypotenuse, and that is going to be um, 15 over 17. Lastly, to tangent is going to be opposite over adjacent because it's total. And that is going to be 8 over 15. That is example 2. Next, example 3 and example 4. So this time you can see in example 3, I can identify nine to be my theta because that will to be my opposite because that's uh, facing the angle theta. I can identify 13 to be my hypotenuse, but I don't know my adjacent side. However, we can totally use the prime knowledge part, use the Pythagorean theorem to solve for it because we already know two different sides. So let's say this is x. 9 squared plus x squared equals 13 squared, so 81 plus x squared equals 169. x squared equals 88. I do need to square root both sides to simplify it. So x is going to be, if 88 is going to be simplified as 2 square root of 22. And that is my adjacent side. Now let's identify the ratios. Sine o, uh, is opposite over hypotenuse, so 9 over 13. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, which is 2 for 22 over 13. Next, tangent. Tangent is going to be the opposite over adjacent, so it's 9 over 2 squared to 22. However, we cannot leave a radical just like that. The rule says whenever, we, whenever we're simplifying the radicals, we got to make sure there's no radicals on the bottom of the fraction. So to get rid of it, I'm going to multiply the top and the bottom by a 22. These two together become four, uh, 22 times 2 is 44, and then top is 9 square root of 22. That is example 3. Next example 4. It's uh, almost exactly the same idea. I'm going to write it here. 9 square root of 22 over 44. Well, let's identify the size first. Theta is here, facing it is my 8, adjacent is the 7, I'm finding the longest side, which is the hypotenuse, 7 squared plus 8 squared, let's say this is angle x, so x squared. We have 49 plus 64, it is going to be 113. But that can't be simplified, so x is square root of 1, 1, 2, 3. Uh, wait, sorry, it's square root of 1, 1, 3. And that is my hypotenuse. Sine is opposite over hypotenuse, so it's 8 over square root of 113, which simplifies to be 8 square root of 113 over 113. We just uh, multiply the square root of 113 on both the top and the bottom. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, so it's 7 square root of 113 over 113. Tangent, tangent is the opposite over adjacent, so 8 over 7. That is example four. Moving on, the next part, we are actually going to use our calculator to find us the answer. So first, if you haven't uh, noticed anything, you have sine, cosine, and tangent on your calculator. But before we do anything like that, we gotta click on mode, which is uh, next to uh, the button that says second, next to the blue button. We're gonna click on mode, and then go to third row to make sure that um, it's actually in the right mode. We gotta choose degree. The other one you may see in the third row is called radian. We haven't learned that. In later lessons, we will learn that is a different way to measure angles. So after you choose degree, you will always, always need to, always, need to check mode. Otherwise, if you're in different mode, you're, um, this is going to be a completely different answer. So first, let's make sure everything is actually on degree. And then we are going to start, and find, start to find the, uh, these angles. So sine i is going to be 0 0.156. 
and cosine 55 is going to be 0.574 tangent negative um, 37 is oh, tangent negative 37 is going to be negative 0 0.754 next tangent 72 that is going to be 3.0778. And cosine 90 is going to be zero. And sine 90 is actually going to be one. So these are some uh, pretty simple, straightforward trig ratios that, can use, that you can use your calculator to find the answers for. Now let's move on to example six and seven. So uh, we have learned SOHCAHTO in this lesson. Group C, that is actually adjacent over hypotenuse, which basically means in this question is asking to draw a label triangle using a ratio given. In this ratio, seven over nine, it's basically telling you the A is the adjacent side is most likely the seven, and the hypotenuse side is most likely nine. So that's how we're gonna draw our triangle. Let's say this is our angle theta. The adjacent side is 7 and the hypotenuse is 9. We do need to find what is the opposite side. So uh, that's 7 squared plus x squared equals 81. So x squared is 32. And that means, take square root, we got x equals 4 square root of 2. So this side is actually 4 square root of 2. Now, sine theta is the opposite over hypotenuse, so 4 squared root of 2 over 9. Tangent theta is opposite over adjacent, so 4 squared root of 2 over 7. That is example 6. Next is example 7. TOA, so tangent is going to be opposite over adjacent. I can draw another triangle. Opposite is 5, actually. And adjacent is 12. With that information, you should be able to find out that is uh, 12 square plus 5 square is 169. And then you can subscribe with that. We can find out the opposite is actually 13. Sine is opposite over hypotenuse, so 5 over 13. Cosine theta is adjacent over hypotenuse, so 12 over 15. That is example 7, and that is everything for 5.18. Thank you.